Mr. Barry asked me to stand in this morning. He's on vacation. But if y'all want to, let's all stand up. Let's uh, lift up our Father and Lord and Savior this morning. Amen. Ago, uh, they're going to do a camp share. Uh, so it'll be uh, here. Uh, be awesome to see uh, the fun time they had there, and the, as they share that. Also, next week um, he's going to have a T-shirt sign up for our Camp Four She VBS camp, uh, which is the 17th, 18th, and 19th of July. So uh, just be ready for announcement that. And that's for our our younger elementary age kids going out to Camp Four She, like we have in the past uh, few years, and having a camp uh, there. At, 
staying there for a couple nights and uh, just being out uh, at Camp Forshee and learning about the Lord So uh, in BBS time. So that's all announcements I have. Anything else needs to be announced? Let's all stand. Let's have a time of fellowship. Please turn and shake your hand your neighbors. <laughs>
church, we know what we're supposed to do when we say praise yes. the Lord always. Yes. Brother Mark would not be happy right now with this. <laughs> Brother Mark would not be happy with this. We know what we're supposed to do when we say we sing praise the Lord. Am I right? Yeah. Hands up. Let's praise the Lord. Here we go. I saw the light. I saw the light.
our children's ministry has been dismissed. Wow. Church, I know you've been standing for just a moment for a little while, but I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. We have a lot to celebrate today. We have a lot to celebrate for what God has done for us. Okay? And uh, when I think about that song that we just sang, there's another song that came to mind. And I've asked my brother, if he would, to lead us in this. And let's, uh, let's celebrate the moment of what God did when he washed away your sins and made you white as snow. What can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. If that's been applied to your heart and life this morning, woo, you ought to be singing the rooftop off this place. So let's stand and let's do that. Let's lean in this morning in worship, okay? Let's stand. Let's sing. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood. extended to all of us. We thank you, Lord, for the blood that was shed on Calvary's cross for the remission of our sins. And my prayer today, God, that everyone here under the sound of my voice knows what we're talking about when it comes to the true forgiveness of sin and that the blood has washed them as white as snow. So God, right now, take this moment, the preaching of your word, anoint it, empower it, God, and do God what only you can do in the hearts and in the lives of your people in this time. For it's in Christ's name we pray and the church said. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Excuse me for a minute. It is good to be back with you today. Uh, pray for me. It's been a long weekend. We've had our youth conference at church and uh, I think I left Friday night after eight hours of work at 12 o'clock. Got up early Saturday morning. Took a group to the airport, went down I-65, it was down to one lane. <laughs> We've had three kids and a dog this weekend. <laughs> and uh, hey, it's been a great weekend, but man. Someone asked me a while ago, said, Rob, how you doing? I said, well, I'm awake, but my body's telling me something different. But hey, it is good to be with you today. I hope and pray you've come expecting God to speak in and through you today. And again, the altar is open. If you need a time of prayer, listen, you feel free to come. I will be available with other church leaders at the end of the experience. If you need to come and have a conversation or prayer, listen, we're available to do that with you and for you, okay? So let's just be obedient. We're going to continue our summer road trip today. Last week we talked about unpacking and packing. Today we're going to take a trip to the mountains, all right? Turn with me to Genesis chapter 22. What's amazing about this is I come in and sit during the Sunday school hour. They were talking about Abraham and Isaac. And I said, hey, I know this day's going to be good. So uh, uh, we're going to take a trip to the mountains today. A very familiar story found here in Genesis chapter 22. But we're going to maybe look at it in a different perspective today and pray that you receive something from that today. God's holy, holy word. Genesis chapter 22. We're going to start our reading at verse 1. Sometime later, God tested Abraham's faith. I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to challenge you with a question up front right now. Has your faith ever been challenged? Has it ever been tested? Sure it has. 
Sometime later, God tested Abraham's faith. Abraham, God called. Yes, he replied, here I am. Take your son, your only son. Yes, Isaac, whom you love so much, and got to the land of Moriah. Go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I will show you. The next morning, Abraham got up early. He saddled his donkey and took two of his servants with him, along with his son Isaac. Then he chopped wood. I want to underline that. He chopped wood for a fire, for a burnt offering, and he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day of his journey, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said, stay here with the donkey, Abraham told his servants. The boy and I will travel a little bit farther. We will worship there, underline that. We will worship there, Ooh. and then we will come right back. Abraham <coughs> placed the wood. Abraham placed the wood for the burnt offering on Isaac's shoulders while he himself carried the fire in the night. As the two of them walked on together, Isaac turned to Abraham and said, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. We have the fire in the wood, the boy said, but where is the sheep for the burnt offering? God will provide a sheep for the burnt offering, <coughs> my son. Ooh, praise the Lord. God will provide a sheep for the burnt offering. Abraham answered, and they both walked on together. When they arrived at the place where God had told them to go, Abraham built an altar. I want to circle that or highlight that. He built an altar. We're going to be talking about these things this morning. He built an altar and arranged the wood. Woo! Then he tied his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood, and Abraham picked up the knife to kill his son as a sacrifice. But at the moment, the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Yes, Abraham replied, here I am. Don't lay a hand on the boy, the angel said. Do, you, do not hurt him in any way, for now I know that you are truly, that I, I know that you truly fear God. You, you have not withheld from me even your son, your only son. Then Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in the horns in the thicket. So he took the ram and he sacrificed it as a burnt offering and placed in place of his son. Abraham named this place Yahweh, which means the Lord will provide. You might want to highlight that, <coughs> underline that, circle that. Woo! Yahweh, come on. To this day, people still use this name as a proverb. On the mountain of the Lord, it, it will provide. So today, we're going to take a trip to the mountains. Now, if I was to ask, I would say the majority of you have been to the mountains, right? Most of you, not all of you. Phyllis and I, we enjoy going to the mountains. We go about one time a year. That's about all I can stand, about three days of it. And the reason being is I can spend more money up there than I can spend at the beach. But anyway, it don't cost to go swimming at the beach. But anyway, uh, we like the mountains. Uh, and over the years, several years of going, even before Tyler was born and when Tyler was growing up, we'd go. And, and even now we go, we're blessed to go with our, family, our son's in-laws. We go and rent a cabin and hang out and have a good time together. But there's some things at the mountains that we really enjoy. Number one, if you stop, I think around red light six, seven, or eight, over by the racetrack, there's an old building, an old place there that's been in business for over 50 years. If you like a good funnel cake, that's where you need to go. <laughs> when we go, we're gonna stop. Phyllis likes funnel cakes. Then, you know, we're gonna eat good. So we're gonna stop at the old mill, or we're gonna go to the apple barn. We're gonna eat good, and then, she likes the caramel apple, and I love banana taffy, so we'll go into Gatlinburg, walk the strip there in Gatlinburg, and have to go to the old country kitchen. Fresh made banana taffy. Come on, Rob. Five pounds of it, right? Yeah. I'm not just getting a little box, but I'm getting a big box. I love the banana taffy. And I'll eat about two pounds there, two pounds home, and then have stomach issues. But anyway. There's some things about the mountains that you 
truly, truly enjoy. The mountain has a special place to you. Matter of fact, uh, Phyllis and I were married in January of 1988 and uh, wasn't able to really do a honeymoon. So in June of that year, where I was working, we had a plant shut down the last week of June, first week of July. So in June of 1988, we actually went up there for a honeymoon. And then about 13 years ago, we were there and uh, I was blessed with Pastor David. Y'all got to meet Pastor David from Strong Tire. Uh, had Pastor David kind of made an arrangement while we were up there on fall break. Phyllis and I met right before you get to Caves Cove, pulled off the side of the road, went on a little walking trail over a bridge. I met Pastor David there. And Phyllis and I were able to renew our 25th wedding anniversary vows. So the mountains have a special place. In the mountains, you have monumental mountain moments. So Mike, I'm going to challenge you with this question today before we go any further. Have you had a monumental mountain moment in your life? Not just physically with a loved one or family, but a man, monumental mountain moment with Jesus. Because see, the mountains are a vital part of scriptures because a lot of monumental moments took place in scripture on a mountain. This is what the Bible mentions. Moses was given the Ten, Commandment, the Ten Commandments on the mountain of Mount Sinai. Elijah and the prophets defeated the prophets of Baal there on Mount Carmel. One of the greatest sermons ever written or said or shared was the Sermon on the Mount. The Mount of Transfiguration took place. Jesus, Moses, Elijah there on the Mount of Transfiguration. Jesus would often go alone up in a mountain. He would lead his disciples, walk up into a mountain, and I shared a little bit about this last week, and spend time in solitude and in prayer with his heavenly Father. So the mountain is a monumental place to be. Here in the story in which I've shared with you, it's a monumental mountain moment for Abraham and his son Isaac. And there's some things today that I want to present to you that we can look at that maybe you haven't looked at before that could hopefully you can have a mountaintop monumental moment as well with Jesus. If you know the story of Abraham, God told Abraham that he was going to give birth to a new nation. He was going to change the world. And if you know anything about the genealogy of all the kings and all the, the things that take place in the Bible that a person's birthright meant something. Well, in this moment, God was told Abraham that he was going to give birth to a new nation. And to do that means that he had to multiply the earth. But the problem was, the problem was, ladies and gentlemen, that him and his wife Sarah could not conceive. But over time, and through God's grace, mercy, and love, and God being God, at the wonderful age of 100 and the wonderful age of 90, they gave birth to a child and they named him Isaac. Now, that sounds crazy in today's time. Matter of fact, if we were to hear today that a 100-year-old man and a 90-year-old woman conceived a child and she gave birth to a child and all was good and all was well, it would blow up every news affiliate across this nation. Social media will be at an all-time high. Did you hear the news? Can you believe this story? Well, here, that was the case. God blessed Abraham and Sarah with Isaac at the age of 190 years of age. But what's amazing about this story was the faith of Abraham because Abraham didn't always do the right thing. It took years for him to get to a place where his faith and his trust in God was real. You've heard Rob say this. I want to say it to you again. You'll probably hear it again through this message. A faith that is tested is a faith that can be trusted. And Abraham had true faith and confidence in God. So today there are three things of this faith that I want to share with you 
that is important about this mountain, okay? Three things of faith and three things that took place during this journey that Abraham shares with or the book of the word of God teaches us here and what Abraham experienced during this mountaintop monumental moment. Number one, the Bible says in verse five that they were going to this mountain, they found this mountain, but it was a place where they were going to go and sacrifice and worship. Sacrifice and worship. He was going to the, to the mountain there to sacrifice his son Isaac, but yet it was a place of worship. Now let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Did you come today to experience a mountaintop monumental moment in a way of worship? Because here at the end of the day, we're not here to worship us. We're here to worship God. Right? right? Our hearts have got to be open to do that. Our minds have to be prepared to do that. You've heard Rob say this. Church don't start on Sunday. It starts on Saturday night. It starts prior. Listen. Did you come to experience a mountaintop moment of worship with your Lord and Savior today? And what sacrifices have you made to do that? You say, well, Rob, I'm here today. I got up, and I'm here. Good. Listen, I'm glad you are here. We got a number of our people that are on vacation. Everybody needs a rest. I don't have an issue with that. But I do want you to know the importance of the sacrifice that you made to be here today. Because you could have been anywhere else. You could be doing something different. But you took time out today to be here today. You sacrificed your time. You sacrificed your energy. You sacrificed maybe an event that you had going on. That, but you took time to be here today. When Abraham took Isaac up on the mountain, they didn't just go up there for a sacrifice, but it was also for a time and a place of worship. I want you to understand something today, ladies and gentlemen. Our mindset, our heart set, our attitude, our attitude of gratitude should be a heart of sacrifice and worship. Because let's just be real. We become a very self-entitled, selfish mindset group of people sometimes, right? Even when it comes to going to the house of God or even worshiping in the house of God. Because we may, we may say, well, I'm going today, but I really don't want to be here. Anybody ever thought that? I'm going today, but I really don't care what the preacher's going to preach on today. I'm just here. I'm here to do my part. Right? But if you don't come with a heart of sacrifice, then you're not doing your part. Amen. That's right, man. Amen. If you're not giving 100% of yourself, then you're not doing your part. Because Christ gave 100% of himself when he died on the cross. Come on, somebody. Right, he didn't give half his self. He didn't give part of his self. He gave all of his self. Woo! When he went up to pray before his time of going to the cross, he said, it's not my will. Lord, I want your will to be done. Come on. Bible says that when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, as he prayed, his sweat became as small drops of blood because of the burden and the weight that he was carrying, knowing that he had to be the ultimate sacrifice for you and I today. So, do we come with a mindset of 100% attitude, gratitude? I'm glad I'm here today. I'm glad that I'm able to be here today because I'm going to tell you, church family, there are people who would love to be here. They can't be here. So, when you walk through these doors each Sunday and you get up on Sunday morning and you go through your routine or whatever that may be, I know what it's like for Rob, but I know, I'm just saying, do you... Do you come with an attitude of gratitude? I'm glad I'm here today. I'm glad I get to worship with my brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm glad that I get to enjoy this moment with this wonderful congregation. I'm glad I get to worship my Lord and Savior. I'm glad I'm in a country that I'm free that I can, can do those things. Because there's a lot of people in a lot of places that are not able to come together in corporate worship to worship a living Savior today without persecution. So there's a lot of sacrifice. If you go back in church history, way back in church history, I'm talking way back. Matter of fact, I got a great book. It's entitled Church History. Go way back to when the church was, a, I'm not talking about the book of Acts. I'm talking about the American church. When the, when the universal church was created, men, women were persecuted to death. 
in their faith and in their belief. You don't have to worry about that today. You're not worried about being put to death here. We're here just a little while. Well, man, I come to church today, but I got to face the firing squad at 1230. You know about that. Because there's an ultimate sacrifice paid for the freedom that we had to come here today. So when they went up on the mountain, it wasn't just a place of sacrifice, but a place of worship. A place of worship. This is, this, listen, church, there's something special when God's people come together with the mindset of worship and praise. Who are we worshiping and praying? Praise it, God. The Bible says if we don't do it, then the rocks will. We don't do it. So do you come in here today with a heart of worship? I hope you did. Number two, it was a place... <clears throat> Um, it wasn't just a place of worship and sacrifice that we find in verse 5. But I love when we read the scripture what all transpired for that moment. It wasn't just a place, but it was preparation. Notice in verse 3, the Bible says that they, he chopped wood. Then we read in verse 9, where Abraham built an altar. And he arranged the wood. Right? So he cut the wood. He built an altar, then he arranged the wood. There was not just a place of worship, but there was a time of preparation for that. Mm -hmm. Woo. How do we prepare ourselves, church family, when it comes to worship? <clears throat> I meant really. How do you prepare yourself for worship? Do you spend that a long time as it was just Isaac? Abraham and God. Do you spend that time preparing yourself? Or do you have a heart of true worship? Now listen, I'm not talking about style. I think that's where we get confused. Because everybody does things different. And, if we, and then we start dictating, well, they're doing it wrong, we're doing it right, they ain't right, we're wrong. Well, yeah. I'm not talking about a style of worship. I'm talking about a heart of worship. Amen. Woo! There's a difference. Amen. Just because you do it different doesn't make it wrong if the heart is connected to God. Amen. I'm going to say that again. Just because it's different doesn't make it wrong. It's about the heart being connected to God. Are you coming with a heart of worship? I'm talking truly with a heart of worship. Here's our deal, church family. It's easy to come in here when we're on a mountaintop. It's easy to raise our hands. It's easy to say amen. It's easy to give God praise. It's easy to open up the word of God. It's easy to sacrifice our time, talents, energy, and efforts to come when life is good. Am I right? But it's those moments. It's those moments when we're going through a struggle, when we're going through brokenness, when we're going through heartache, when we're going through all the mess that we go through. But aren't you glad to know this morning that God can take a mess and turn it into greatness? Amen. Woo! Amen. God can take a situation and what He, what the enemy meant for bad, He turns it for your good. Amen. Listen, I'm talking about a heart of worship. And are you preparing yourself, even in the midst of your situation, to come to a house of worship? In this moment, Abraham made preparation. He cut the wood, he built the altar, and he arranged everything the way it should have been. Is that how we are? Are we truly preparing ourselves for a time of worship in your own personal life? Whether you're in the valley or on the mountaintop, he desires the praises of his people. Preparation. So how? I'm going to challenge you with this question. How do you prepare yourself for a heart of worship? How do you do that? How do you do that? You spend that time in prayer? Do you, I'm, I'm talking about prayer. I'm not talking about here, Lord bless me and mine and we're all fine. Amen. I'm not talking about that. I'm not saying, Lord bless my four and no more. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a prayer of gratitude. I'm talking about a prayer. I'm talking about 
praying one for another. I'm talking about giving God a prayer of praise. Because prayer is a part of worship. Do you know that? It's not just coming and asking. It's about coming and praising. It's about coming with an attitude of gratitude. And I think sometimes we sometimes fail to give God the praise for who He is, for what He's done, and what He's going to continue to do for each and every one of us. And we walk in sometimes and we allow our emotions to guide us. We allow our situation to dictate us. When at the end of the day, we should come with a heart of worship and prepare, and already pre-prepared to do so before we enter the building. Listen, I, I, I spend a lot of time on the road with my job. I do do a lot of driving. And there's a lot of times, man, I have, I have uh, Caleb on. Or there are times where I'm just in a moment of silence and I'm just driving and I'm concentrating and I'm focusing on the things of God, the way of God, the word of God. I have a Bible app and I get on there and I, I hit a, a, a Bible uh, chapter in the Bible and I have it playing and I hear some of the good news, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And sweetheart, I'll be driving down the road and I'm concentrating on God and I'm supposed to turn on Portland Boulevard and before you know it, I'm on Victor Reader. Come on, somebody. <laughs> huh? You know why? Because I'm caught up in the moment of worship. I'm caught up in the moment of God and being in His presence. That's what I'm talking about. So do we have a heart? Of, are we preparing our heart for our mind and our mindset on worship? In your work, at your home, at rest, and even at play. Do you have a heart of worship? Mm -hmm. And are you preparing your heart for that? See, what's amazing in my journey, I don't know what it's like for you, but I'm going to speak for me. On so this morning, I didn't turn no TV on. I didn't turn all that mess on. I know it's going to be hot today. I don't need the weatherman to tell me that. I know there's some fighting going on. I don't need the television to tell me that there's not fighting taking place. Listen, I know somebody probably got stabbed or killed in Nashville last night. Huh? I don't need to hear that on Sunday morning. You know why? Because Rob's preparing his mind, heart, for worship. Get the junk out. So God can come in and do a work in me and through me. So in this story, they didn't just go to a place. Abraham didn't just take him to a place. But he made preparation while he was at that place. Right. And the third thing that we see in this story is provision. God providing what seemed impossible was made possible by God. Notice what he said. Look in Verse 13 and 14. Then Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught by his horns in a thicket. So he took the ram and he sacrificed it as a burnt offering in place of his son. Abraham named this place Yahweh, Yara, which means the Lord will provide. Somebody look to your neighbor and say, the Lord will provide. Listen. What seems impossible with man is not impossible with God. This was an impossible situation, but God showed up and made something possible out of something that was impossible. A ram caught in a thicket, which became the sacrifice, and his son Isaac was spared. Do we recognize God's provision in our lives? Huh? Listen, I don't believe in coincidences and nor do I believe in luck. You've heard people, well, I just got lucky today. It's more than a song by Stephen Cox, Stephen, what's her name? Country song back in the 90s. I feel lucky. Huh? It's more than that. No, it ain't luck. And it is not coincidence. You know what it is? It's God's provision. God providing for you. When you think it's impossible, God shows up and shows out. When you think it ain't going to work out, God works it out. When you think it can't happen, with God it can't happen. When you think that doom and gloom is ahead of me, no it's not. It's praise and celebration. And you can only find that and understand that with your connection with Jesus. 
I'm going to say it again. You will only find that and know that through your relationship with Jesus. <clears throat> we celebrate moments, don't we? Listen, at our church, we call it wins. You know, I'm, I'm going to celebrate some wins here. Can I say some, celebrate some wins here at Union Chapel? Huh? Y'all ready? Huh? We just had two beautiful children born into this church family. I celebrate that. We just had some kids go to church camp and experience a great church camp. Come on. Where some students got saved. Huh? Right here. Some students got saved. We've experienced some things happening right here in people's lives. Right here. We experienced a great revival a few months ago. We experienced God doing what only God can do. Even in the midst of a situation. Even in the midst of our troubles and brokenness and sorrow. God's still showing up and showing out. Amen. Come on, church. You know why? Because he's a God that provides. Amen. The Bible says that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Even in this moment on this mountain, God did not leave Abraham, nor did he leave Isaac. He was there. So the question I want to challenge you with today, where is your heart at? to a place of worship, an attitude of worship, and celebrating God's provision on your life. Are you truly leaning in? Are you just sitting back? I heard a person say one time, <laughs> it's amazing how people are sometimes. They just love to sit, soak, and sigh. <laughs> I don't know why any Christian would want to find themselves in that state. We should be a group of people that's celebrating, rejoicing. The weeping endure through the night, joy cometh in the morning. Come on, somebody. Woo! So where's your heart at today? I'm glad you asked, Rob. Turn with me. You'll see the scripture on the screen, Matthew chapter 6. Verse 20. Store your treasures in heaven. For moss and rust do not destroy, and thieves do not break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven. Store, circle that. Store your treasures in it. Store means to put up, means to place your treasures in heaven. Look at Luke chapter 12, verse 34. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will be. This was a mountain monumental moment for Abraham and Isaac. A moment. It was a mountain, it was a mountain moment. Thirteen years ago when Phyllis and I renewed our 25th wedding anniversary vow. It was a monumental moment. Thirty-six years ago when we got married on January 22nd, 1988. Monumental mountaintop moment for Rob. <clears throat> but do you really want to know when it really, really was good? On the third Sunday of August of 1987. You know what happened there, Bo? I heard a message. I heard the gospel message. And I stepped out of that back seat Walked all the way up to the front on an altar of prayer. And on that day, I gave my heart and life to Jesus. Amen. A monumental mountaintop moment. Woo. Today, 30-something years later, I can still celebrate that. Because you know why? Jesus lives within me. The Holy Spirit dwells right here. So as my brother comes and gets ready to give us a song of invitation, where's your heart at today? Do you have the forgiveness of sin? Do you have the true blood applied to your heart today? That you, even today, through your moment of circumstances and situations and adversities, you're still on a mountaintop because God is Jehovah Jireh. Mm -hmm. Woo! God loves you unconditionally. God. 
has provided for you. You say, well, Rob, I ain't got much, but I'll tell you what you do have. You got more than most. That's right. You don't believe me? Let's go on down to 101 the bridge. As a matter of fact, you ain't even got to go to Nashville anymore. There's homeless right here in Portland, Tennessee. Right. I had a church friend of mine right down the road here, Pastor Larry Treadway in Portland General Baptist. Uh, I, I, was, I was speaking with my good friend Randy Gibbons the other day, and they went down Thursday to Nashville and delivered 11,000 bottles of water to the homeless mission shelter there. He said, Rob, it was just a drop in the bucket. Do you have an attitude of gratitude this morning? What God has done in you, what He's God, what God has done for you. Are you on that mountaintop moment right now that you're just praising God of His goodness and His mercy and His grace? You should be. Do you remember the day that you got saved? I like that old song, Brother Harper. I remember the day when the Lord saved me. Come on, somebody. Woo! Mountaintop moment. Come on. Maybe today you have a heart of worship. Maybe today you got an attitude of gratitude. And maybe today you'd just like to step out with you and your family. And you're going to come and you're just you're not going to ask God of anything. Because He's already blessed you with everything. Your beautiful family, your children, roof over your head, food on your table. You just want to come and give us God a come and give prayer praise. You can do that in your seat, but you can do it up here. Maybe today, you haven't made things right with God. You don't know what it means to have a true heart of worship. And find that place. And make that provision. And understand God's provision for your life. Because you have never received Him as Lord and Savior of your life. He's here today. He wants to change you forever. You can do that. The Bible says if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I love Romans chapter 10. And he says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know who whosoever is? Us. Mm -hmm. Woo! You! Me! So this morning, as our brother gets ready to sing, stand with me. Would you like to experience a mountaintop, monumental moment right now in your life? You can. <coughs> We're gathered in a place. We come to worship. And God's provided. And God continues to provide. Just like He did for Abraham and Isaac. He'll do it for you. So this morning, let's lean in. Let's worship. Let's pray. Let's praise. If you have a need, you come. This time is your time and God's time. Let's make the most of this opportunity. Because, because, who knows, this may be your last. Let's make the most of it. Sing this one. <clears throat> Sometimes I fall to my knees and pray. Jesus come let today be the day what about it sometimes I feel just like to come up and say Lord thank you for the blessings I'm going to pray thank you for our children our grandchildren thank you maybe you just like to come and say Lord thank you for this church wonderful fellowship for the Thank you for that mentor in my life. Come to you. That's just taking time to invest in me to make me a better version of myself. We've been waiting through that person. So through God. For the day what about you? Who would come in and be honest with us? There we go. We're going to come to a place. We're going to come to worship. We're going to recognize God's presence. What about you? Come and turn this around. So deep down I know this world isn't home. So come, Jesus, come. Come, Jesus, come. To back in the edge, wait. There'll be no more. 
just meditate on a few moments with God right now. Help me in your own personal way. When Jesus comes, let the day be the day. extended to us, that unmerited favor. God, we recognize you have placed us in the paths of so many people over our lifetime that meant so much to us. We recognize that, God. Those who have poured into us helped us in our journey in this thing called life. Those who poured in your word to us to make us understand more about you, to be more about you, God, we give praise to you. Whether it's a co-worker, a neighbor, a Sunday school teacher, a mentor, a friend, a family member, or even a pastor. Over the years, God, you've placed them in their lives to encourage, empower, equip, even through the good and bad times, even through struggles, heartbreak, loneliness, despair, depression. God, we're grateful that you did that and continue to do that. But God, most of all, we're grateful that you're a God that walks with us every day. Whether we're in a valley or on a mountaintop, you're omnipresent, you're there. Whether we're in an attitude of celebration or a heart of brokenness, God, you're there. God, you're there. God, we recognize that today. We recognize your blessing upon us. Our family, our friends, church family, our neighbors, 
co-workers, our jobs. How you provide for us, O oh Lord? In difficult times, you find a way to provide. <coughs> God, we're grateful for that today. So God, may we leave here today with an attitude of gratitude. Be thankful, God, that we can come in a, to a place, whether it's in corporate worship or private worship, God, and just come before your presence with praise. And thanksgiving. Whether it be by ourselves or with others, God, we come before your presence with praise and thanksgiving. Whether it's in the car or in our homes, <coughs> at a campground or on the beaches or in the mountains, God, we come before your presence with praise and thanksgiving. And we thank you, Lord, for who you are, for what you've done, and what you're going to continue to do. God, we thank you. We ask this. We proclaim this. We say this in your precious and holy name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. There are three lessons today that we learned in this wonderful chapter. Number one, we see Abraham's obedience. Number two, we see Abraham's giving. He was going to give his son as an ultimate sacrifice or a burnt offering. And number three, we see his faith. We see his faith. My prayer is today, as we dismiss and as we go out into the community, may the people that you do life with see your faith. See your faith. I'm going to say it again. See your faith. That even in a time of struggle, you're going to walk around with a smile on your heart, a smile on your face, and joy in your heart. I get it right here in a minute. You'll walk around, not in despair and brokenness, but you'll walk around with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Come on, somebody. Mountaintop moment in your life. We've all experienced it. But here's the deal. I don't want just to experience something once. I want to live it out. Huh? I want to live it out. And my prayer is today that that's exactly what you're going to do. You want to live it out. God's blessing be upon you, church, is my prayer today. Let's walk out of here with an attitude of gratitude. Listen, when you go to the Mexican restaurant here in the river, <laughs> You ordered Diet Coke and they brought you a regular Coke. You're going to say, you know what? It's okay. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> they bring you a chicken taco instead of a beef taco. It's all right. <laughs> Attitude of gratitude. Come on, bud. Come on. Love you, church family. Maybe you got a word on your heart this morning. Before we change the order of the service, I do have a couple of announcements to share at the end. But uh, I want to give you an opportunity to share as well. Anyone? I've been for revival six nights this week, mm -hmm. going back tonight. I'll, I'll, I'll miss you next Sunday going back to Scotland. Okay. And uh, the word sacrifice that you were talking about, I was a 90 year old man. But I don't really consider a sacrifice me to come to church. I pray. I thank you. I pray you be going to God. Yeah. You understand right. what I mean? Sure. I know what you mean to me. Yeah. But it is time. Man. That's right. It yeah. is time. Come on. I enjoy what you did. God bless you, brother. Appreciate Miss you, man. You thank ain't you. coming back next Sunday either. You ain't much supposed to say that. <laughs> <laughs> man, well, you well, just well, leave the bucket well, of water well, on the well, fire, well, brother. Well, <laughs> It's all good, guys. It is. Anything else? It's been good to be in God's house. Amen. 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 And to feel him so strong. Amen. Amen.
Bless your heart. Amen. Good crowd here this morning. God bless you. I know we got a number of our folks on vacation. We're gonna have some folks next week out. It's okay. You know, we're just hey, I love what a person said one time. If I'll just do my part, God's gonna do his part, and we all be blessed. Come on. So just do your part. Amen. Anything else? Thankful for that man experience. Amen. Nineteen said. Yes, sir. weekend support an association at White House Church okay get a chance please go and support that worship on Friday night all the business stuff on Saturday I know that's not always fun but anyway I do encourage you to go number two next Sunday night you can go at any time you have service next Sunday night I don't know but Strong Tower Church there in Oak Grove Westmore Pastor Dave okay their church is doing fireworks you'll have food trucks they're gonna have music you don't have it all. It ain't going to cost you nothing unless you go to a food truck, okay? It's going to be fun. It's going to be a little hot, I know, but listen, I want to encourage you. You got plans next Sunday night. Want to see a good fireworks show, good music, fellowship. Pastor Dave would love to see you. want to encourage you to that. Also, uh, the Wednesday, before the 4th, I think it's July 3rd, that Wednesday night, Salmon's General Baptist Church, Pastor Andy Mathias. Y'all don't know Andy, do you? Anyway, Pastor Andy, their church is doing fireworks. So if you're looking for a place to go for a little while, short drive, you ain't got to fight the 550,000 people down there in Nashville or the 150 in Goodlesville, in Harrisonville, you can go right up the road here and support your local churches, okay? They would love to see you. See Brother Andy, tell them hi. If you see Pastor Dave, tell them hi. Tell them you appreciate what they're doing, okay? Huh? Good? All right, just wanted to share that with you. Anything else? Our business meeting normally is uh, first Wednesday night in uh, July. Mm -hmm. There you go. It's the second Wednesday night in July business meeting. Okay. Come back tonight at 5 o'clock. We're going to continue and share some more about Abraham and this story right here, okay? You're going to be included in the discussion, so come back. All right? We're going to have a good time tonight at 5 o'clock. Okay? All hearts and minds clear? You're good? Shake hands to those around you. Tell them you love them. You can be dismissed. God bless you.